Hello and welcome to today's show. We have a very full plate today and assuming I don't end up in A&E, we ought to end up being able to squeeze that in just fine. Now to start with, we're going to make a dish called tandoori chicken because quite honestly, you know, don't you get tired of the same old thing? I mean, I like chicken and waffles, but you know, I, I just can't eat chicken and waffles every day. I like a lot of things. I like, I, I tend to like a little spicy food, so that's kind of set me on this Indian uh, flavor again. I just did a curry, and I got to thinking, you know, tandoori is really easy to make, and it's very reminiscent, actually, of sort of a, a mustard flavor, so the boys down in Georgia ought to like this. It's different, uh, but it's extraordinarily easy, and I think it's awfully tasty. So if you've ever been at an Indian restaurant, I'm sure you've seen it on the menu, and it's just very, very common. It's also very easy to make when you have a box kit to start with, so that's what we're going to do because we've got a lot of work. In fact, we've got to push mow uh, about 400 feet of ditch line, and then we've got about three hours, you know, to cut the six acres, and then after that, we've got, if we've got time, we've got, of course, to do uh, three or four hours, you know, on the fence row back there, and that's on top of shooting these two videos, the cooking video, and of course, we've got a, a, a chainsaw video. We're going to explore what makes a, a saw cut crooked, and as I discovered in Knackered Old Chainsaw, uh, I had some parts that uh, needed some attention, you know. I tell you, w when you just, you know, work like we do, sometimes you don't realize something something wears as much as it does and we got it going so we're going to do all of that today if we can fit it all in and, and avoid uh you know accident so uh we also getting ready to do a series of three okay use three fingers three recipes that are all going to be similar in nature the first one of course is tandoori chicken uh, i'm going to do a tikka back strap because I got one more piece of deer, uh, you know, backstrap, and I'm not going to use a box for it. I'm just going to keep that simple. Just do the one, just do a simple recipe. I'm going to make it from scratch. I've got a box. We're going to make it from scratch because I'm going to deviate a little bit, kind of from normal. Going to hollow it up a little bit, and then the last one is just going to be an improvised recipe. Now, it's a little bit of cheating because the fact I've improvised this once before and it turned out real well, so. It's just amazing what you can do with, with stuff around the house and, and the same basic technique that is just so simple to make. So uh, with that, we got a lot of work to do. So let's get on with the tandoori chicken, shall we? Now to make the recipe today, I'm going to use Greek yogurt, 0% Greek yogurt. That high concentration of protein helps it uh, cook and make a nice thick coating. It's 0% milk fat and capable of standing a spoon. It's, that's how thick it is. And you want your coating to be thick enough so that it will hold the spices on, you'll get a nice thick coating. If it's too thin and watery, it'll run off to the side. We're also going to use a little less than half a cup of uh, ghee and or coconut oil. I actually mix the two together somewhat because I like the flavor of the ghee, but ghee is very expensive. And also the coconut oil has that low melting temperature so that at your body temperature, it's actually a liquid oil. We're going to use uh, two kilograms or four pounds of chicken. This is chicken breast that I have already they were individually quick frozen, so what you need to do there, you want to thaw them, drain them, and I've split them, and I've laid them up essentially on a, on a rack inside of the, the, like a cake rack inside of uh, the refrigerator so that they would drain, and that takes a lot of moisture off. Again, you want it to be able to stick, and if you're too liquidy, the coating won't stick. We're going to use a box masala just to show you how easy it is just to dump it in there and go. And, you know, I just can't resist. I'm going to add a, about a quarter of a teaspoon of extra hot chili powder. And we'll use lemons to squeeze it out to get the lemon juice to kind of give it that tangy flavor. 
and the whole thing is going to present like a nice almost mustard flavor with a slight hint of a fruit because there's a little bit of mango in it i believe and we're going to go from there okay this is one of those i would have to say on a scale of difficulty of preparation um, one being the least uh, 10 being the most difficult that it would take uh, some fancy British chef to do this because we know the French can't cook. Oh, did I say that? Uh, I have to say this maybe a one and a half. Uh, basically, that's the cup and a half of yogurt and I'm going to dump the, the oil in there. I'm going to open a box. Now this is technically very, very difficult to do. Get up there. Open a box, tear a bag, and of course, just because I like punishment, I guess, I'll put that in there. Now our lemon, we're gonna add the juice in here of at least two lemons, maybe a third. I think two will probably be enough. And then we will use one of these two things to agitate with, as if we don't have enough agitation in this kitchen. Well, that is probably going to do it. It's either about right or maybe just a little bit too thin. I'm going to take my little pan, put my chicken, and the bottom and pour my marinade and I had a few pieces I need to get up under which I will use me paws and we will set this in the ice box while we go play with the chainsaw. So here we are with the chainsaw and we're wondering what does make a chainsaw cut at angle? Nobody that I've seen yet has actually explained that. And a lot of times it is just a dull chain. And part of that is we often, you know, doing a ground cut, you cut something like this. If you're cutting down like that, you get pretty even wear. But if you're doing the cut off at the base, we often dull one side more than the other which results in say this outside edge and that's one explanation for it but there's a little bit more to it and uh, when we look at this this is <laughs> this is all please forgive me i would call this a stunt saw presented just to illustrate this point but you know i cut a lot of fence rows and in so doing um I end up uh, cutting a lot of soft wood like hackberry we have in Tennessee, hackberries and, and uh, cedars and things like that. So, and I, and I keep my saw sharp so it's not really that big a problem, but when I was getting ready to do this video, I discovered my bar is worn out, which I really hadn't paid that much attention to because when mine gets dull, I sharpen it. If it starts to cut crooked, I sharpen it or tighten it up. A loose chain can do it and right now you can see just how much wobble we have in that chain right there now let me let me show you why let me just loosen this, this particular up. saw has been slowly leaking for some time and I do have a bar on order by the way I've got a ProLite bar on order but are you seeing the, the width of this gap and I'll get a close-in shot here. Now you see how, how wide this has become. And there's actually a little lip. Now I can take a, a file and, and take that burr off, but it's not going to bring that any closer together and loose. It simply allows that uh, 050 to not ride center of that rail because the center is so, so unbelievably wide. But... Let's also talk a little bit about chains. Now 
Now compare that to the new bar. See how tight that is in the track? It's going to keep that chain riding smooth and square. Now let's talk about chains. Now this chain right here is more of a residential style and you see there, there of course is, is a tooth and there's a tooth but in between the teeth you see an extra little guy that sits in here. This raised little fella here, this extra little bit helps reduce the aggressiveness of the chain. In other words it's going to reduce the kickback that this particular chain produces. And here I sort of have a, a nose, a little fake nose, bar nose. And you see as you go around here, see how this stands out and then this one stands out. And if you're cutting, that's in the kerf right there. And that's going to reduce the amount of grab that, th that this thing has by having those little these little extra little rakes or drags or whatever that you have here, it's going to reduce the amount of kickback that this particular chain is going to produce. And so this is actually a preferred and safer chain for, you know, your weekend warrior, somebody doesn't cut a lot. Uh, it, 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 it'll still cut something up quite a bit. It's just not going to give you quite as much kickback. Now you compare it to something like this LPX. And this LPX, you see, let me put my hand behind it, get a color there. See, it, they don't have those on there. And this is, a, this is an increased kickback chain. And it does have some features, like the little, like the little ramp up to the, the rake. But when you go down to the end, let's run down to the end of that. See, here's an example right at the end of the nose. And see how that end tooth is. The, the wood, when it goes around and it's making a cut, these teeth, as they round the nose, get a really good bite. And this saw produces quite a bit of kickback at full RPM and, and full cut. And so chains, the various chains, have different characteristics. And you don't want to use a chain that's a little too aggressive on your saw if you're not, you're not used to it. So that's just a caution manufacturers recommend it. Now let's talk a little bit about about the chain uh, when a chain is worn out what what some signs of wear are. Let me see if I can re tilt this. Camera. One of the areas that you would look for chain wear is right at the bottom. How much is this bottom edge that rides against the bar? How much is that wearing up toward the rivet? Another area of wear is how many times has this thing been ground? back to the rear. There's another, there's another effect to it which reduces the amount of cutting. So you may still be sharp this way but you still may not be able to get a bite. There's another adjustment that we make and I'll get a reposition on it and I'll show you. Now with this, with this LPX up here um, what we end up having is the these rakes, these, these canoes, these canoe shape up front on the tooth, what they do is they control the depth that the tooth cuts. And since the tooth is on, and I'm going to exaggerate an angle, since the tooth is on an angle like this, whenever you grind it back, grind it back, grind it back, the depth gauge function that the, the rake does up here, it actually stays up, and so what ends up happening is you end up getting your edge further and further behind. Now, to take this down, you don't want to just grind it down willy-nilly because then you end up with some teeth being up too tall, which makes them overly aggressive. Then you end up with some that are down too, too low, which don't get enough. So the chain manufacturer makes a tool which is specific to the chains. And then there's a range of chains. So what, what they do with it is you turn it right side up, of course, and you slide it back on the chain, laying it flat, and then you have it comes with a file. You're able then to take off only the correct amount of depth gauge here. And you have to do this on the chain on the chainsaw. You don't want to just go like this. That's not good. 
So you actually have a tool and put it on there like this, laying flat on the tooth. I, gotta, I guess I'll push that down because I can't get a good grip on it. And then you would just go back and forth. And again, you can see how worn out that bar is. I do have a, a new pro light coming. It just won't be here till Monday. And, and then I'd have to wait to shoot the video. So that's one of the things you do. Now let's go over to the grinder. I know. What? Yeah, right. Okay. We got to show a hand, uh, hand tool. Now this is a hand tool that often comes with a kit. And what they have, see it says 30 degree. And you got left and right. And you got a 22 degree and a 25. Now what does that mean? Well, I have one of the boxes for one of the LPXs here, and this one happens to be 20 LPX. So when I look at my little scale, it says 20, 20, 20, 20 LP, 20, 20, 21, 22 LPX. It takes a 3 sixteenths, which that's what this file is. It's a 3 sixteenths on a 25 with a 10 degree. So they're showing B is the uplift on the tooth at 10 degree, and it shows angle-wise to the tooth at 25 degrees, showing a, a, see what does it say right there? Yeah, the 20 is a 3 16, which is this size, and the D shows the depth at 025, which is what that little tool right there says, can you see it? 025 inch or 0.63 millimeters. So we've got all the proper tools. And what it is, is you, you put this on here at this angle. And we've got 25 degree mark that when I, when I come up through the tooth, this allows me to use this line to be parallel with the bar. So that gives me my correct angle when going through the teeth. Does that make sense? So that you're doing it exactly the same way. And if you had some sort of a vise or something to hold this when you're doing it by hand, it's great. If you're doing it on like a four-wheeler in your woods, which is the only way I'd use this little dude, and I keep this in my four-wheeler, is I, I actually bungee strap the back of it down. Otherwise, when I'm running, I actually carry a spare chain with me. Because if I'm out in the woods and I'm far away from home, and I dull a chain and I'm not finished working, it's a real pain to mess with. Let me go over to the grinder now. Now the basis of this is, let me get it on the right type of tooth. I'm not gonna actually run this. First of all, you wanna find something similar to this. This is, this is one where I have two teeth in the same, the same teeth in the same direction. And that tells me where my starter chain is. And you can either start there or you can take a, a magic marker or something and make a mark on it. Now, you have an adjustment here which pushes the tooth forward. You have a clamp which holds it in position. You have a tilt when you do the bottom that allows you to set to that same 25 degree we read on the box. And it allows us to then tilt this and we tilt the bed this way and that way for purposes of the 10 degree attack on the tooth itself and now we're past center the 3 16 file is represented by the different rock that we have in there and when we come down and saw it we just kind of go, go down like this we have a depth gauge on the back of this which keeps us from going down too deep and when you grind one you always want to make this adjustment last so that what you end up doing is you want to push it gently into this rock so that you're taking off the minimum amount of material. You don't want to blue your tooth. You don't want to take off too much tooth. So come down, boom, and once you get it adjusted, you cut all of the teeth exactly the same. Now to make the reverse, you would turn this, get that on that 10 degree mark, if that's, again, that's what the chain is. Mine was a 10 and a 25. Put it over here at 25 degrees. Tighten that down. And now, when I release it, I'm able to move a tooth at a time. And then I do this side of the chain. See, very simple. And again, using the same depth, the same stops, I'm able to cut the chain uniformly back and forth. 
But what it doesn't address is the depth of cut, which has to be done manually the other, with that manual tool. And that chain takes a, a 25,000 uh, cut right here. Whew, I tell you what, I am plumb tuckered out. I have showered and had my power nap. And that is after having, what, cut four or three hours out in the fence row after mowing for three and push mowing for another hour or something like that. And that was after doing, of course, the shooting the chain video and of, you know, doing the pre-work on the tandoori, which we have to get out of the refrigerator and pan out, get in the oven. And of course, since we did all the heavy work, all we really have to do is get it cooking away. And so without any further ado, uh, let's get to that because I'm getting tired. Well, that looks like about enough. I wish I had a little bit more room on the pan, but we're going to put this in the oven at 375 for about 45 minutes. And maybe a little less when as we've, we've uh, split these chicken breasts down. Okay, we have popped out of the oven. We checked it part of the way through. The chicken was done, so we didn't want to dry it out all the way. And we took it, turned it from bake to broil just to kind of toast up that top. And I tried a little piece right there. It is really good. I'm, I'm telling you, this is just so simple to do. And it, is, it, is, it tastes, it's a barbecue that tastes like, a little bit like a tangy, mustardy, although there's no mustard in it, a tangy uh, kind of flavor to it, the lemon juice, uh, the yellow presentation, I guess, puts it in your mind. I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's tandoori chicken. So let's get it plated and uh, sit down. I'm tired. Uh, I'm, I'm ready to watch a little TV, finish this thing up, wrap up my night. Well, that's about it. I have plated some lunches for the following week and tonight's dinner. Of course, the tandoori chicken, some mixed vegetables, a little honey wheat flatbread with a coriander chutney, and of course, a little bit of fruit on the side. Well, that's it. It's time to wrap it up. Let me throw my little tootsies up and uh, call it an evening. I do appreciate you guys stopping by. I tell you, you don't have to put a lot of work to uh, come up with something just a little bit different. Next upcoming episodes, we're going to do, uh, what is that? Uh, 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 Tick a backstrap, I think is one of them. It's going to be from scratch. Although you can buy a box kit for it, but it's going to be a, a from scratch. So it'll be a, a something a little bit different. Do a kebab, and then we're going to do after that the recipe. After that one should be what did I say I was going to do with it? Oh, an improvised one, showing with just stuff around the house how easy it is to come up with something a little new and a little different, and just uh, just simple as pie, uh, easy as cake. I tell you, I don't think this is very fairly low fat once you uh, cook the oil out. And, and as you saw in the pan, it did come out. So thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate the viewership. Thank you. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.